there is one game we all play, and that game is called Real Life. Not everyone is good at it, but some of us are. Real Life is an open world game, with endless possibilities. And after all, only the uncultured spend their day-to-day -day life in just one country. So join me in my life of leisure, as I explore the best games for the handheld around the world. I hear a lot of talk about man caves these days, so I found a man cave of my own. In my previous two episodes, I talked about Super Mario Land 1 and 2. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the final entry within this trilogy. Wario Land is officially known as Wario Land Super Mario Land 3, but it deserves better respect than a mere sequel. Because really, Wario Land isn't a sequel at all. Aside from cameos from the princess and Mario, this game is full of new characters and has a format completely different to that of any of the other Mario games. Wario Land is a platform game developed by Nintendo for the Game Boy. It is the first video game to feature Wario as both a playable character and the main character of a video game. A game. Just like with the previous two games in the series, the plot transitions straight from one game to the next. After being ejected from Mario's castle in the previous game, Wario continues on his quest to get his own castle. He wants one even bigger and more impressive than that greedy Donald Trump wannabe Mario. To fund this extravagant dream, he travels to a new region to the Mario franchise, known as Kitchen Island. The reason Wario has chosen this destination is because it is an area in which a group known as the Brown Sugar Pirates have hidden many treasures and coins. Wario must work his way around the island, beating up pirates to a pulp and stealing, plundering and pillaging as much treasure along the way as possible. Finally, we have an open, honest, transparent character to play as, rather than that no good social justice warrior, Mario. Nobody likes a self-serving do-gooder. Yuck. Wario Land at the time was super fresh as the game featured a theme of greed. This is obviously ridiculously different from almost all of Nintendo's other franchises. It is the first game Nintendo decided to have a main character whose cause is decidedly selfish. A notable catchphrase during the advertising campaign was be the bad guy. There are no princesses to save, no world in peril, there is only one goal. And that is for Wario to earn as much money as possible in an effort to buy his own massive castle and make that champagne socialist Mario jealous. This concept of playing as the bad guy blew my mind as a small child. I won't lie, the very first time I powered this game up and played as Wario, I felt a bit dirty inside. But when I quickly realised I was beating up pirates, I was happy as I found out I was playing scum on scum action. It's kind of like when drug dealers are stabbing each other in your local area. You don't care which one dies, but as long as one of them does, you are happy. Yeah. Anyway, upon finishing this game, the larger the cash total Wario collects throughout the game, the better house and ending that Wario will receive. For this reason, there are multiple possible endings to the game, a concept fairly new to video games at the time of its release. Now it is time to talk about the gameplay. Let's talk about Wario first, and how he differs from controlling Mario. If you tap the B button, Wario does a ram attack, in which he runs forward unstoppably. This attack allows you to kill enemies and to smash blocks in which are in your path. Just like myself, and of course Mario, Wario is also a hat connoisseur. Wario has various power-ups which give him different hats that allow him to function differently. Firstly, there is the Viking hat, which gives Wario a more powerful ram attack. There is the Eagle hat, which functions similarly to Mario's rabbit hat, which allows him to glide momentarily. And there is the dragon hat, which lets Wario breathe fire. On top of all of this, when Wario takes a hit, he shrinks, 
just like Super Mario. However, instead of eating a mushroom to grow, Wario grabs a piece of garlic instead. Mmm, garlic. Keeps the vampires away. Nobody wants bloody Eastern Europeans knocking on their door with their cheap manual labour, sucking the blood out of the local building trade. Ugh. As stated earlier in this review, the themes of the game are greed and treasure hunting. You must use your power-ups to your advantage when seeking out all the treasures of the game. For example, certain distances can only be got across by gliding. Some blocks can only be smashed by the Viking hat and you can only destroy blocks in front of you underwater with the dragon hat. The gameplay in Wario Land is where this game really shines. In most platformers, including Super Mario Land 1 and 2, you can run straight through to the end of some of the levels in less than a minute. In Wario Land, however, you must use your enemies carefully rather than just killing them straight away. Wario has the special ability to stun his enemies, pick them up, then toss them around as if they were a rugby ball. This opens up lots of opportunities. For instance, you can see if there are higher platforms out of view by throwing an enemy up the screen and seeing if he comes back down. When an enemy is stunned, you can also use him to bounce to higher ground. This is just one of the many examples of how Wario Land takes simple platformer elements and extends them to make a game which not only breaks the mould, but retains its sense of fun when doing so. Once again, like in Super Mario Land 2, Wario Land features the return of the Overworld map. However, rather than getting to choose which area you tackle first, the path in this game is linear, like in Super Mario World and Super Mario Bros. 3. One innovation in regards to this though is that the overworld map and previous areas in which you have visited do change sometimes as you progress through the game. This allows you to reach treasures and hidden exits in which were impossible to get to previously. The world around Wario is also pretty to look at. While it is not immensely detailed, it does a terrific job in creating the atmosphere of the current location. The level designs and textures do a good job of correctly defining each area. The area includes a seaside area known as Rice Beach, a giant mountain in the shape of a teapot referred to as Mount Teapot, an area full of lava called Stove Canyon, a pirate ship area known as the SS Teacup, a forest area known as Parsley Woods, and the final boss's lair, Surup Castle. Further to these areas, there is even a whole extra secret area full of levels known as Sherbet Lake, in which you can visit and plunder even more bloody treasures. Like in Super Mario Land 2, big boss battles are back at the end of each area. These fun boss battles include a fight with a mean turtle covered in spikes, a raging bull who which possesses his own charge attack, a penguin with the boxing skills of Chris Eubank, a massive bloody head that shoots its snot at you, a gigantic angry baby bird, a large ghost that can paralyse you so you can be gang raped by smaller ghosts, and last but not least, a genie in a lamp. Just prior to getting to this genie, you bump into a character who looks like Princess Jasmine from Aladdin, who one would assume has been captured by the pirates. As you approach her bed, however, it becomes quickly apparent that Wario is not going to receive a good old rub, as she chooses to rub a magic lamp instead, unleashing a big fat genie on you. Wario's chances of a good night are now completely over, and even Rufies would not be able to fix this situation. It turns out that she was in fact Captain Syrup, the leader of the pirates the entire time. After an intense battle with the genie, climbing up clouds and jumping on his head six times, the main game is now over. After the battle, Captain Syrup throws a bomb in order to blow up her castle so she can make a quick getaway. This reveals a nice shiny statue of Princess Peach. As soon as this happens, that no good thief Mario appears in a helicopter and steals the statue out of nowhere. And Nintendo build Wario as the greedy character. The game ends with Wario wishing for his own castle from the genie. However, the catch is, the genie wants Wario to pay him in order to grant his wish. 
Now, this is the interesting part. Wario will be given a castle of appropriate size and splendour based on how much he has collected. It's basically an indicator of how thoroughly you have combed through each world looking for stuff. So when you finish the game for the first time, you feel inclined to carry on playing the game and seek out each and every last bit of treasure, deepening the game way past either of the game's Mario prequels. With so much exploring to do, treasures to find and puzzles to solve, this game isn't going to be completely done a week after you buy it. There is so much to explore and it's worth it just to get the best ending. The game is bursting at the seams with secrets. As I mentioned previously, there is even a huge hidden world as well. It was an exciting feeling at the time unearthing such a massive hidden area. The game also never repeats itself. There are many different types of levels, such as levels with constant dangers, levels with things chasing you, levels which are more like mazes, and levels that are fast paced and yet still retain all the secrets and brain massaging gameplay of the game. My only criticism of the post game is that some of the treasures were so bloody difficult to find. I spent my entire childhood trying to find some of these items and they never ever showed up. I reckon bloody Maddie McCann would be easier to unearth than a lot of these items. Anyway, with the modern advantage of YouTube as a source, I managed to mop up the last few hidden treasures, and upon discovering where some of these were, it was no wonder I could never bloody find them. Wario Land is a game chock full of bizarre humour that shows traces of its Mario origins. However, the game is innovative enough to stand up on its own two feet and stand out as its own franchise. In my opinion, Wario Land is the best game of the Mario Land trilogy. It is a refreshing change to play as Wario and the game offers some of the best platforming and exploration the Game Boy system has to offer. So, whether you want to purchase an original cartridge copy of the game or want to download it on the Nintendo 3DS eShop, Wario Land is a must-have game to add to your collection. So get out there and buy it. Cheerio! Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Bloody subscribe. One of the few channels on YouTube where you can get high quality retro reviews on a weekly basis. It's time to make YouTube great again. Also, if you are new to my channel, then feel free to click one of the annotations and watch my Mario Land 1 and 2 reviews. Education, education, education. Yeah.